All right. So, John, we're talking about what happens if we have a free program. Uh, maybe we were beta testing it and now we're moving that into a paid format. So, um, you know, with with. OK, so first of all, you can launch. Of course, you can launch a paid program anytime. It, the free program isn't a required prerequisite before a paid program happens. I, actually, I, I do want to mention this. A lot of people think it is that is a required launch sequence is free Facebook five day challenge, right? Or 30 day challenge or whatever, and then move into a paid program. And it's like, I, I almost want to rant against it because I'm so sick of that sequence, <laughs> you know, uh, but not, not, not about your, your program, but John, I'm just saying generally I've been taught that I've been, I've seen that all of my colleagues have been doing that for 12 years. And I'm, I'm like, oh my God, yet another free five day challenge on Facebook or, or, or wherever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, nowadays there's other platforms, but, but I just think, listen, if you have a program or a group or a product that is the right match with your audience, they should be happy to pay for it. And they not should be, they will be happy to pay for it if you have a large enough warm audience and you've done the market research or you have somehow good market intuition that this is the right program to sell. Um, so bottom line, uh, so the free program. So in other words, I'm kind of separating the two projects. If you're doing a free group or free program, which I've done before as well, I do it more like an experimentation, a, a beta test of the, con the concepts, the exercises, the, the way the program is structured. I think that's wonderful to, to beta test. And I think you should do it. But now, John, we're talking about simply launching a paid program. Some of the free people might not, maybe none of the free people sign up for your paid program, but your other audience, you're the rest of maybe one of, or I don't know, a certain percentage of the free folks might sign up. But what I guess what I'm saying is that we don't expect that just because they were part of the free thing that they, that they have some kind of obligation or, or interest even to sign up for the paid one. And that's where kind of, I, that's my complaint about the, the free Facebook five day or 30 day challenges is that the creators of those free quote unquote challenges it's you know, well, John. You you appreciate this because you know you and I both enjoy the Bhagavad Gita, right? <laughs> and you know it's like the free challenge people have completely fallen into the trap that the Bhagavad Gita is talking against, which is they've completely attached to the fruits of their actions. <laughs> They're completely attached to the fruits of their free challenge. That, that literally, the, the the creators of the groups are like resentful if the people from the free they work so damn hard to serve the free people, why didn't they sign up for my paid program? They feel resentful towards them, or some of them anyway. Yeah, can, and, and I, the other thing I think, which is part of the disease is, and we're going off the track here, but yeah, yeah. is that people buy into a formula yes. and they think that the formula is some secret sauce or magic right, thing, right? right? right and and right. so if they follow the formula, why didn't they get the you know, right. fruitcake that they expected at the end. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's exactly, yeah. And so there are so many factors, right? There's a million other factors. Like the formula was taught by a, a creator who already had a super warm audience, a large enough warm audience who had already been consuming their content in a particular area for maybe years. And when they launched the program or a course, obviously their warm audience who already understand their expertise and trust their expertise and had maybe they've done some market research. It's like, hmm, how come the formula didn't? No, no. I, you know, it's like, it's like you, you, you don't have all the assumptions that they, that the teacher came with. So anyway, but long story short, John, I think that you already have a warm audience and I think you should just go ahead and launch the paid program. Yes, and some of the, the free people, obviously they're gonna hear about it and you should tell them about it and some of them might join. But I would say, um, take the, obviously, take what you've noticed in the free, the part of, you know, what's the, the benefit, how can we utilize the benefit of the free group to help us launch a paid program better? Well, the free group essentially is your market research group. And when I say market research, what I mean is you can basically, number two, two ways to market research, right? Observation and then questioning, right? So observation is like going, gosh, what prompts or topics have I put into the free group 
that were particularly, you know, people loved or people like really engaged with. Well, that's the observation of, ah, these topics, questions, bullet points, um, issues, trust, challenges, frustrations, goals. Those I should definitely put on the sales page for my paid program. And notice the topics, prompts, questions, issues that I thought were important, but they didn't really make me. They were a little too advanced for them or whatever. Okay, I'm not going to put that on the sales page. I might talk about that. In per anyway, and then questioning them. So, John, this is a great opportunity that you should ask them. Well, I mean, you probably are asking them already. It's like, what other, you know, I mean, you're doing a TikTok program. So, hey, guys, what, when you're thinking about, you know, doing your TikTok, what's, what's really, what's really, uh, what's really difficult for you? Or like, what are you really curious about in terms of the TikTok you know, uh, algorithm or the TikTok community or the, or, or what makes TikTok videos work? Like, what, what are you really curious about? Like, what, what would you love to like, if I could just figure this one thing out, right? That asking them these sets of questions or the other question to ask them, which I love doing is what other courses have you bought recently? What other programs are you thinking of signing up for? Anybody? You know, comment below, chat below, whatever. And then they'll tell you, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm thinking of buying so-and-so's course on this or so-and-so's program on that. And you should be taking mad notes. Go, that's good to know. Thank you. And then you go and research those course sales pages and go, what about, what is it about those that I can emulate? You know? So basically, John, you have, a, you have a, a captive audience for market research right now. And we should use that opportunity. And great. I've been learning. The, the other bottom line question, if I can just follow up, is um, price point. I mean, I'm price and where point. I'm at right now is I'm thinking about basically following yeah. your example and making it 80 bucks a month. So yeah. Do you have any comments about that? Well, um, yeah, price point is a tough one because it totally depends on what your audience is used to. And so it really, uh, everybody has built a different audience. I mean, sometimes we've built an audience through joint ventures and partnerships and the people from that uh, that those joint venture partners audiences are used to a certain price, higher price or lower price. Sometimes we build an audience just through social media or more randomly, perhaps, or through ads or whatever. And we don't actually know yet what they're accustomed, what they're accustomed to in terms of the price point, which is also why market research comes in, which is why we ask our group and our audience, when was the last, what was the last course you signed up for? What was not the last? I mean, just tell me any course or program that you remember signing up for, especially in the realm of insert broad topic that your paid program is going to be about. Oh yeah, I, I uh, you know, let's say you're going to do a, a course on, on TikTok or the, the paid program, let's say. So, oh yeah, yeah, I signed up for George's um, authentic video creation course and that was 150 bucks. Good to know, thank you very much. And it was 150 a month? No, 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 150 one time. Oh, okay, good to know. All right. So then you know, okay, well, this one voice represents probably 10 or 15 or 20 other voices in your audience. And so, okay, at least there's one vote for this price point. Well, let's look at what other votes are there. And so I, I, I mean, absent the market research, actual feedback from your audience on what price point they're used to in this field, all you can do is just guess. I mean, really at that point, well, no, I mean, there's also observation of your peers in your, who have a similar audience, what price point are they charging? Is it working? And sometimes it's hard to know if it's working because they might, the sales page might look amazing, but they might have, you know, three people signed up. I don't know. So it's right. like, you almost have to either befriend them and find out if, if it's selling well, which is one of the most useful things you can do with a partner, with a, with a potential with a colleague is to tell each other what programs are selling well and what programs are not selling well it's like that's such valuable information that you wouldn't have known until you you, you were on the inside so so john i i would say you know part of the pricing of course also involves how much time you are investing in a particular you know offering and say well for for that amount of time i'm investing how much am i expecting to earn so how much time you're investing and how many people do you expect to be able to sign up reasonably based on your previous launches? And without previous launches, it's hard to, it's hard to determine that. It's like, it's like, this is why I'm always tracking my launch numbers. Always, always. It's like, oh, the previous launch of this program got this many enrollees at this price point. Got it. So this launch probably going to do similar. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't. 
I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't I don't have that history. Exactly. One, one, so this one is going to be the experiment question right that now. I think might be yeah. interesting to other people too. Is I'm I'm in a meditation group and the teacher actually has kind of not kind of like she has a, a sliding scale. Yeah. Where she okay. goes, this is your basic price. Yeah. This is your and she has like very yeah, graceful yeah. kind of categories. Yeah. Well so have you do you have an opinion about that? Yeah, uh, I do have a, maybe often <laughs> I do very yeah, much have an opinion. Like, Okay. Uh, on, on so sliding she has scale. like four options. Yeah, go yeah. I, I'm going to give you, um, I have a whole blog post on sliding scale, um, which which uh, has a video discussion on it as well, which you can, you can uh, I'm going to put that into the chat below. For the sake of Thanks. time, given that you know, I'm going to let everyone out on time today, um, I'll just say that sliding scale, the people who want to do sliding scale like you are because you're very compassionate and you care about your audience and you want it to be okay so there's on the one hand there's the it's impulse. also because i don't know what the right price is exactly on the one hand there's in, there's there's compassion on the other hand there's insecurity you know that's why a sliding scale happens it's like i'm compassionate and i have no effing clue what what my work is worth <laughs> and so 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 it's almost like you're outsourcing the decision to your audience the please audience tell me what i should be charging because i have no effing idea so um but the problem with sliding scale is many there's many problems with sliding scale i don't like it i think ultimately we should do market research of course figure out what our our, our own investment into our, our time and money and to, therefore what we need to be compensated back and ultimately we have to test with a humble offer to say hey what do you think what do y'all think here's the price Here's the thing. And you could offer scholarships too. You know, I, I really don't see a problem with that. Uh, limited place scholarships, but sliding scale, no, I would say. <laughs> so anyway, that's my opinion on it. You can read more and uh, thank you. Thank you that. so much. Sorry to take so much time. No, no, no. I, thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I really appreciate you.